Welcome to Newstead Abbey, formerly the home of the poet Lord Byron. Newstead was founded as an Augustinian priory in about 1163 by Henry II. For nearly 400 years it was home to a religious community. Then Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries and in 1540 granted Newstead to Sir John Byron of Colwick, who converted it for use as his principal country residence. Newstead remained in the Byron family until the time of its most famous owner, the poet George Gordon, 6th Lord Byron. The poet lived here at various times between the ages of 20 and 26, that is, between September 1808 and September 1814. Personal circumstances and financial difficulties obliged Byron to sell Newstead to his friend Thomas Wildman in 1818. Wildman had inherited a large fortune from plantations owned by his family in Jamaica. Between 1818 and his death in 1859 he spent much of that fortune in the repair and restoration of the abbey and its estate. His widow sold Newstead in 1861 to a wealthy landowner, William Frederick Webb. The abbey and its collections have been owned and administered by Nottingham City Council since 1931. This room, the Great Hall, occupies the site of the Hall of the Priory. Here, royalty and other distinguished visitors to the monastery were entertained. In their conversion of the priory to a country house, the Byrons kept for their own use much of the monastic building, including the Priory Hall. When Thomas Wildman acquired Newstead in 1818, this room, like many others in the house, was in a very poor state, with extensive alterations and redecoration in the Gothic Revival style. He installed all of the woodwork seen here and the minstrel's gallery, together with the great stone fireplace designed by the Nottingham architect T. C. Hine. The elaborately carved oak screen bears Wildman's monogram and the date 1818. Its Latin inscription refers to the history of Newstead's ownership. Here, as elsewhere in the abbey, heraldic devices are very much a part of Wildman's Gothic Revival decorative scheme. They appear on the brightly painted shields and in the stained glass windows made for him by Thomas Willamont in about 1850. The poet Byron inherited his title and the Newstead estate from his great-uncle, the fifth Lord Byron. During his long life, the fifth Lord had been obliged to sell most of the contents of the house, even the door handles, in order to pay his bills. By the time the poet came to live here in 1808, this room, the hall, was a cold and empty barn-like space, lacking its fireplace. The floor was covered in straw and the roof leaked so Byron and his friends used it for pistol practice. This room is displayed as Byron's dining room, the poet's private retreat. Here he dined alone or with a few intimate friends. In Byron's day this room was well appointed. The hangings were scarlet, candles gave a warm glow, a good fire burnt in the hearth. The floor was carpeted. It was very warm and comfortable, in contrast to the cold and empty hall next door and the almost universal neglect he had inherited in the rest of the house. Above the stone fireplace is a 16th century overmantel made of carved and painted wood. It's one of a group of four overmantels brought to Newstead some time before the 1770s, possibly from Colwick Hall. This one bears the Byron coat of arms and motto Crede Byron, trust in Byron, and is dated 1556. Except for the mahogany side table in the alcove, none of the furniture displayed in this room belonged to Byron, but it is very like the furniture known to have been here when he lived at Newstead. Above the sideboard is a picture of the poet's grandfather, Admiral John Foulweather Jack Byron, as a young man. It was painted in about 1748 by Joshua Reynolds. To the left and right of the fireplace are portraits of Sir Nicholas and Sir Thomas Byron, signed and dated 1631 by the artist Joachim Otto van Hoekgeest. These Byrons and their kinsman, John, the first Lord Byron, were staunch royalists during the Civil War. In the far left corner of the room, a small door conceals the remains of a guard robe, a medieval privy. It's a reminder that in earlier centuries this and the rooms above were the prior's private apartments. This was the poet's bedroom. 
and it's dominated by the carved gilt wood bed that he brought to Newstead from his student rooms at Trinity College, Cambridge. Beneath its domed canopy are four carved gilt wood baron's coronets. The poet was the sixth Baron Byron of Rochdale. Flanking the bed are ebonized and carpeted bed steps, upon which rests a pistol. The poet always kept a loaded pistol nearby when he slept at the abbey. He brought this bed to Newstead in the autumn of 1808, shortly before his 21st birthday. At that time, Chinese-inspired designs were fashionable. These bed hangings and the window curtains, all printed with a pattern of pagodas in a landscape and lined with bright canary yellow chintz, are exact reproductions of the glazed cotton originals. The fitted carpet is an exact copy of the one that was here in the poet's time. A Brussels carpet woven with a pattern of scattered green and golden leaves. The furniture and pictures in this room belonged to the poet. The tin bath, as well as the toothbrush holder, soap dish, jugs and bowls displayed on the washstand were also his. Thomas Wildman created this library in the 1830s and decorated it in the Gothic Revival style fashionable at that time. The walls are plaster, painted to look like carved oak panelling. Today, Wildman's original Gothic Revival oak bookcases contain objects and books associated with the life and work of the poet Lord Byron. In the first case is a pair of Byron's shoe lasts. Their symmetry belies the fact that he was born with a deformed right foot. This caused him to walk with what his contemporaries described as a sliding gait, slightly dragging the right foot along with each step. He was extremely self-conscious about this all his life. However, though he always refused to dance, his disability never prevented him from participating in sporting activities. Byron was taught to box by gentleman John Jackson, a renowned pugilist of his day, whose portrait is at the top of the second case. Displayed here also is some of Byron's sporting equipment, fencing gear, boxing gloves and a pair of his pistols, together with a brass collar said to have been worn by his Newfoundland dog Boson, who accompanied the poet when he rode on the Mill Lake at Newstead. The painting above the fireplace shows the poet when he was 25 and at the height of his fame. It's a copy of a portrait by Thomas Phillips, seen later in the tour. The artist was Phillips' studio assistant, Thomas Griffiths Wainwright, who was later convicted of poisoning members of his family and transported to Tasmania. To the right of the fireplace is a portrait by Thomas Stewardson of Byron's mother, Catherine Gordon Bryan. Mrs. Byron boasted descent from Princess Annabella Stuart, daughter of King James I of Scotland. To the left of the fireplace is a portrait by Thomas Phillips of Byron's cousin, Mary Ann Choweth Musters, with whom the poet fell in love when he was fifteen. But his case was hopeless, as she was older than he and already engaged to be married. On the wall opposite the fireplace is a portrait of Byron's elderly butler, Joseph Murray, painted for the poet by the Nottingham artist Thomas Barber. Here, too, is a portrait of Byron's mistress, Claire Claremont, the unhappy mother of his illegitimate daughter, Allegra. It was painted in Rome in 1819 by her friend, the artist Amelia Curran. The contents of the cases at the far end of the room include memorabilia associated with Byron's last days. The poet travelled to Greece in 1823 to help the Greek patriots fight for independence from the Turks. He died of fever there the following year, a martyr to the cause, and he remains a hero of the Greek nation. The swords and black helmet displayed here were his, as was the sabre-tash, a leather case designed to be suspended from a cavalryman's saddle. The green wool fur-trimmed jacket was also owned by Byron when he was in Greece, and may have been worn by one of his entourage. This is Henry VII's lodging, also known as the Japanese Room. Geraldine Webb, who inherited Newstead Abbey from her father in 1899, travelled to the Far East with her sister Ethel, probably sometime in the 1890s. Upon their return to Newstead, the two sisters redecorated this room in the Japanese style. They fitted the upper walls with house screens and painted panels that they had brought back from their Far Eastern journey. These screens and panels depict the beauties of the natural world 
and date from the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. They're hand-painted on gold leaf with peacocks, cranes, ocean waves, pine trees and cherry blossom. The wood panels on the lower walls are 19th century Japanese and carved with waterfalls, water lilies, quails, birds of prey, possibly falcons, carp and other wildlife. The furniture in this room was brought to Newstead by the Wildmans and the Webbs. The partly gilt, solid ivory Anglo-Indian chair to the right of the fireplace was made in Murshidabad sometime between 1800 and 1810. It belonged to Queen Charlotte and was purchased by Mr. Webb's father in May 1819. Other furniture here includes an ebony settle and elbow chair, both late 17th century Ceylonese. Beneath the lamp is a small, late 17th century Milanese rosewood cabinet of drawers, inlaid with ivory, lapis lazuli, agate and cornelian. Next to it is a late 18th century Milanese bureau cabinet in ebony veneered walnut and olive wood. Its surface is inlaid with European boar hunting scenes and oriental lion hunts, within borders of scrolling acanthus, flowers, birds and grotesque masks in engraved ivory. Today, this room is set out much as it was in Thomas Wildman's time, when it was known as the Great Drawing Room. Byron's forebears used this as a dining room. In around 1630, the first Lord Byron added the ornate plaster ceiling. It has been much restored, but the two rows of classical heads at the east end are original. In the poet's day, this room was empty, the furnishing of Byron by Thomas Phillips and store. This is a portrait of Wildman's friend Augustus Frederick, Duke of Sussex. To the right of the door is Michael Dahl's painting of the poet's great-grandmother, Frances, Lady Byron. Painted in about 1720, the year of her marriage to the fourth lord, it shows her in a pink satin dress. She's seated at a spinet and holding open a folio of Orpheus Britannicus, a collection of songs by the British composer Henry Purcell. The painting over the entrance door shows Newstead Abbey in about 1730. It's by the Flemish artist Peter Tillemans, to whom the fourth Lord Byron was both patron and pupil. Tradition has it that the two men collaborated in painting this picture. The monastic refectory occupied this area of the building 800 years ago. Here the brethren took their meals in silence. To the right of the fireplace is a small section of the refectory's original painted decoration dating from about 1200. The artist has created a bold frieze of scrolling leaves and above this he's drawn lines to make the plaster on the wall look like blocks of stone. The precise location of the poet's study within the abbey is not known for certain but most of its contents have survived and are displayed in this room. Whenever he was in residence at Newstead Abbey, Byron devoted many hours to reading and writing in his study. In August 1811, the journalist and travel writer F. C. Laird visited Newstead Abbey and was shown round the house by the poet's butler, Joseph Murray. Mr. Laird's account of his visit was published shortly afterwards and includes this comment on Byron's study. It was impossible to enter this room without noticing some of the very unusual ornaments for such a place, but as the house itself is literally a mansion of the dead, for the monkish cemetery was in the cloisters, it may account for the noble owner's taste in decorating it with relics of the dead. Amongst these relics were four very ancient human skulls, highly polished and the colour of fine tortoiseshell. Byron displayed them in pairs upon twin flowerpot stands at either side of his writing table. They were souvenirs of the time he had spent in Athens during his grand tour of the Near East in 1810 and 1811. Their present whereabouts are not known. The skull that we see in the bookcase was not here in Byron's time. Likewise a mystery is the precise fate of the poet's gruesome skull cup, a replica of which is on display. The original cup was made in late 1808 from a human cranium discovered by the poet's gardener. He'd been digging near the site of a former monastic burial ground at Newstead. 
Byron was impressed by the cranium's great size and sent it to a Nottingham jeweller to be mounted in silver as a drinking cup. It was engraved with a poet's family crest and a specially composed verse. The cup was later dismantled and the cranium laid to rest by Mrs. Webb, who arranged for it to be given a Christian burial in a secret location. The scrap screen belonged to Byron and is believed to have been made for him in London by his fencing instructor Henry Angelo sometime before 1816. Decorated with portraits of famous actors and boxers of Byron's day, it celebrates two of the poet's great passions, the theatre and pugilism. Beneath the mantel shelf of the fireplace is a painted terracotta plaque made in the 1760s by William Collins, who was a friend of the artist Thomas Gainsborough. One of a group of three such plaques by Collins at Newstead, this one depicts foxes devouring a bird. Above the mantel shelf is another of the Abbey's colourful 16th century overmantels. This one has two mermen at the centre, above which are male and female heads in profile, possibly representing kings and queens. Our tour is now ending. We hope that you enjoyed it. Outside there's a cafe which serves a range of good food and beverages. There are also delightful gardens for you to explore. Goodbye, and we hope to see you again. Thank you for visiting Newstead Abbey.